In this exercise, we're going to do a flux integral. So given the vector field f of x, y, and z is x, z, 0, let's find the flux of this vector field across the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared, where z is between 1 and 9, oriented with outward pointing normal vector. First thing I would like to do is sketch this paraboloid. Okay, so there's the paraboloid itself. Now let me situate it in R3. So we see our x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. So the paraboloid goes from z equals 1 through z equals 9. And as we set up our flux calculation, we're going to keep in mind that this paraboloid is oriented with outward pointing normal vector. Okay, our flux integral is going to be calculated as a vector surface integral. So over this surface, which is this paraboloid piece, we're going to do the flux of f dot ds. I write my differential like that to indicate that it's an oriented surface. We have a sense of orientation. That's a conceptual form for this uh, surface integral, though. So in computational form, we can say that if we have some parameterization for our surface, where d is the domain for the parameters, say, u and v, then we can evaluate this flux integral by doing f of r of u of v. So we plug our parameterization into our vector field and then dot that with ru cross rv, where we want that cross product to be oriented consistently with our surface's description. And then the differentials, which I'll write as du dv. OK, so let's parameterize this surface with some vector value description, r of u and v. If I take my surface, kind of cast its shadow down on the xy plane, we see that it, it has a shadow which looks like the region between two concentric circles. So this shadow is going to be the domain D for our parameterization. It would be natural here to describe the x and y coordinates in this domain D using polar coordinates. Or in other words, we're going to set up a cylindrical coordinate calculation. So we'll say that r of u and v, because x and y here have different distances to the origin depending where we are in the domain, and also we're rotating all the way around, we're going to have the radial coordinate and the angular coordinate and polar coordinate serve as our parameters. So x will be u cosine v, y will be u sine v, and then given that, z is x squared plus y squared, which is going to be u squared. Now we want to compute the cross product, so we need these vectors r sub u and r sub v. That involves taking the partial derivatives of this parameterization with respect to the parameters. So r sub u will be cosine of v, sine of v, 1, and then r sub v will be negative u sine of v, u cosine of v, 0. I just realized I did my u derivative wrong. I was thinking the third coordinate was u, but it's u squared. So I should have written 2u up here. OK, let's take their cross product. ru cross rv. The first coordinate will be sine of v times 0 minus 2u times u cosine v. So overall, that's negative 2u squared cosine v. The second component in our cross product will be 2u times negative u sine v minus cosine of v times 0. Should look a lot like the first coordinate, and it does, just the trig function switched. So we have negative 2u squared sine of v. And then the third component is cosine of v times u cosine of v minus negative u sine v times sine v. That's going to be u cosine squared plus u sine squared. Since cosine squared v plus sine squared v is 1, overall that's just u. Now we need to check if this cross product is oriented in the correct direction, and it's actually not. My favorite way to check that is to look at the z coordinate. That's usually the most useful, and in this case it certainly is. 
So if you imagine these orthogonal vectors that I've sketched here, because our paraboloid is opening upwards, to point out means to point slightly down. So the z component of any of the vectors pointing out of this paraboloid should be negative. However, u here in the third coordinate is going to be positive. I just realized I never said what the parameters were. Let me go back to my parametric description and add that really quickly. u is the radial coordinate. So since we're going from z equals 1, so x squared plus y squared equals 1 is like a radius of 1. The innermost radius in this domain is 1. For the outside, that's sitting directly below the curve that we see in the plane z equals 9. So if 9 equals x squared plus y squared, that means the outer radius is 3. And then, of course, theta is going to go all the way around, so from 0 to 2 pi. Returning to our analysis of this cross product, the third component is u, which is a positive number that's pointing in the opposite direction. So what we have here is a vector which is pointing inwards. I'm going to stick with this the way it is. But what I'll do is I'll throw a negative in front of our computation to indicate that I oriented it in the backwards direction. So if you've oriented incorrectly, you don't have to start over. You just need to negate your final answer. OK, now we have everything we need to do this flux integral. So I'll start plugging in. I'm going to have this negative out front because of our backwards orientation. And then we're going to do a double integral where the domain for the parameters are from 0 to 2 pi and from 1 to 3 f of r of u and v means take these coordinates, treat the first one as x, the second one as y, and the third one as z, plug them into our vector field. So the vector field is going to return the first coordinate. So that will be u cosine of v. Then it returns the third coordinate. So that will be u squared. And then 0. Dot our cross product. So negative 2u squared cosine v, negative 2u squared sine v, u, du dv. OK, I think I've squeezed it all on the screen. All right, let's actually continue evaluating this now. So I'll leave the negative out front, 0 to 2 pi, 1 to 3. Let's do this dot product. We'll have negative 2u cubed cosine squared v minus 2u to the fourth sine of v plus 0 du dv. OK, let's anti-differentiate with respect to u. I'm going to pull the negative 2 out front and then anti-differentiate with respect to u. So when I pull the negative 2 out front, I'm going to have negative negative 2. So that's going to have a leading coefficient of 2. Then we're going to integrate from 0 to 2 pi in the next round. And then anti-differentiate with respect to u is going to look like u to the fourth over 4 times cosine squared of v minus u to the fifth over 5 sine of v. For all of this, I'm going to plug in top and bottom bounds for u, so from 1 to 3. And then we still need to integrate with respect to v. OK, continuing on, we have that leading coefficient of 2. We're going to integrate from 0 to 2 pi. Plug in 3 to the 4th over 4, so that's like 3 squared squared. That's 81 over 4 minus 1 to the 4th over 4, so minus 1 over 4. Cosine squared of v minus 3 to the 5th over 5 minus 1 to the 5th over 5 sine of v. And then integrate that with respect to v. We have two components in this integrand. Both of them have trig functions. I want to focus on the second one, that sine of v. If you integrate sine of v from 0 to 2 pi, that covers one full period for sine. So if you picture a sine wave, you go up, you go down. From 0 to 2 pi, the graph of sine of v encloses as much positive area as negative area. So the integral of this function with respect to v from 0 to 2 pi will be 0. OK, so this whole part is going to get wiped out. Integrating cosine of v from 0 to 2 pi would also integrate to 0 for the same reason, but that's not what we have in this first expression. We have cosine squared of v, which is always greater than or equal to 0. So all the area enclosed under this function is positive. 
In order to anti-differentiate this, I'm going to use the power reducing formula. Okay, let me clean this up a little bit more too. 81 minus one is 80, 80 divided by four is 20. I'll pull that out front and have two times 20 is 40. Then we're gonna integrate from zero to two pi. That leaves me with the cosine squared of v dv. Cosine squared of v using the power reducing formula can be written as one half plus cosine of 2v over v. Cosine of 2v has a period of pi. So that means 0 to 2 pi is two full periods. We would have positive area, negative area, positive area, negative area. It would all cancel out so that this component would have an integral of 0 over the domain from 0 to 2 pi. So that just leaves us with the first expression. We'll have 40 times 1 half v integrated from 0 to 2 pi. So plug in top and bottom bounds and you get 40 pi.